one of the hesitations about people using first line osimertinib or maybe favoring an approach that doesn't is you know the issues about what do I do next if I've used mm. osimertinib. So if you have a T790M negative patient or you have a patient who progresses on osimertinib, uh, where do you go from there? And let's presume that you can give the Empower 150 regimen. I mean, you can, we can just categorically say, well, it's not approved and so dismiss it. But if you have that available, how compelling is that as an option for you right now? Or would you favor chemo alone or something else? Well, if there's no T790, there's no MET amplification, or other stuff that we can target, I'm actually very inclined to use that combination, the quadruple combination that you just mentioned, with bevacizumab and Atezo and Carbo and Paclitaxel. Um, I think in the absence of a good, viable option, uh, you know, looking at the subgroup analysis with a hazard ratio for survival of 0 0.52, granted 100 patients in that study, I'm very much in favor of trying that kind of a regimen in somebody who's progressing on RC if I don't really have another option. Because what is my option beyond that? It will be carbon pemetrexid. And yes, this patient population has a wonderful response to pemetrexid. It's a very viable treatment option. Again, in the absence of head-to-head -head comparison, you know, use just a simple carbopem versus the quadruple therapy. Um, I'm still favoring the use of the quadruple therapy if I had access to it. Sure. I agree. Um, I don't think we have randomized data to distinguish which doublet I would use. You know, I would use a doublet. I would prefer to use a pemetrexid-based regimen, but I think Empower 150 is the only uh, data that incorporates bevacizumab, which I think is relevant in mm -hmm. the EGFR space, and immunotherapy, um, in, and included patients that had previously been treated with the TKI that had an EGFR mutation. So I, I, I would very strongly consider the quadruplet in that setting. Do I want to put a plug in here. We have a study coming out uh, that Joe Treat at our institution actually wrote, and it's fun that it's going to be a multi-institution study looking at carboplatin, pemetrexid, bevacizumab, and atezo versus um, the, just a the triple without the, without the atezo. So uh, two-arm, phase two, randomized study. We get some more information, but we'll So see. this brings up the question. Uh, we have what looks quite encouraging. In fact, Tony Mock presented at ESMO Asia very recently some data on uh, the EGFR-specific population that looks especially good but only in that arm B with carbo, paclitaxel, bevitezo. Uh, we've gotten a little data on carbo, pac, and mm -hmm. atezo. That doesn't seem to have that benefit. Empower 130 with carbo, nab, pac, and atezo uh, also doesn't show a clear right. signal of benefit in the smallish population with EGFR, ALK. Uh, so w the data are certainly limited, but uh, but we'll get more information. There's Merck, I believe, is going to be running their uh, in, uh, Keynote 789 trial that is basically going to be like 189, but in the EGFR mutation positive post TKI mm -hmm. patients. Is the BEV the secret ingredient? I think so. I, I feel that that's one of the escape mechanisms for resistance. Mm -hmm. um, and I feel like BEV should be included when you're talking in the second line setting. So outside of a trial, you would not feel as comfortable using 189 if you could do Empower 150? Outside of a clinical trial, let's say I could not use the quadruplet, I would probably f gravitate towards carbopem BEV. But, but if, if you had Empower 150 available, you would favor that over Keynote 189? Correct. Okay. Haas. I think the question for VEGF is interesting, and I think it is relevant, particularly in combination with IO. My only concern is that what if pemetrexid is such a better drug in this group that you don't need to add IO necessarily, so you, don't, you can get away with the triple therapy. Um, you, you know, the, that, again, when you play these kinds of games, you have to consider all of the issues, right? So maybe pemetrexid plus BEV would be sufficient to overcome you know, a resistant mechanism and give you just as good of a result. So at this point, I agree with Charu. If I have the option, I would probably gravitate towards 150 as opposed to 189 in mm -hmm. this patient population because I believe the VEGF interaction with IO is real, um, but that's just the way I'm interpreting the data. No, I, th I think that's quite fair. So 
Uh, obviously, we're going to learn more. We're going to get more data, but these are important studies. What uh, do you believe, or are are there any data to speak to there being different patterns of resistance that develop among the EGFR TKIs other than osimertinib versus uh, the first or second gen agents, or as far as we know, there's no real differences between patterns between a fat nib, dacomit nib, or the first gens. Not that I'm aware of, right. no. Not for a pattern of failure like that, yeah. I, I don't think it's well studied, but right. I, uh, to my knowledge, there are no data to right. speak to that. Right. 